Hattie at UPenn. This is joint work with Ben Fish at MSR. And I'm going to talk about the effects of competition regulation on error inequality in data-driven markets. So there's a lot of technical work on the causes of unfairness that you can see in practice. Things like too little data, or maybe you're fit, uh, trading a model on one group and then predicting on another. Uh, maybe you don't have enough budget to buy data, all sorts of other things. Um, and there's a lot of work on, the, uh, on designing better algorithms um, or introducing processes to uh, essentially to counteract these ex post or, or with pre-processing. But the question we study is will any of these uh, be used in practice? Um, so we're going to consider a setting in which firms are using data to provide a product or service to consumers um, and they're using machine learning to create that service. Uh, and consumers are all going to benefit from increased accuracy. So think about a setting like speech recognition or search and not loans, insurance, or something like that. I mean, we'll formalize unfairness as the gap in error rates across groups. So at a high level, we are studying the learning problem uh, and the interaction between the consumer and the firms, the consumers and the firm. Uh, for now, think about a monopoly, although we'll relax that later. I um, mean, we're going to use the lens of learning theory to look at the learning problem and economics to look at the economic interactions, naturally. So in terms of what the actual process is, uh, the firm is going to have access to two sources of data, IID, for each group. Um, it's going to choose how much data to buy for each group. It has an unbounded budget, so it could buy as much data if it wants. The data is infinite if it wants. Um, and then the consumers are going to react to the worst case error rates for the, the models that the firms are going to train. Um, and so the next thing is the sort of ingredients that go into the model, how you actually formalize these things. So we're using very simple and standard assumptions. Uh, learning is going to uh, be basically a decreasing error as your data set grows with some diminishing returns that are formalized with the learning rate. Uh, cost will be linear in data points, although the costs can be different for different groups. And revenue will decrease with error as well. And again, it can be at different rates with different groups. So just a, a note, like what is minority status in our model? So our model is economic, not social. So a minority group has a smaller market size. Maybe it's less elastic. It's more expensive to gather uh, data. And I, just to emphasize, like some or all of these won't hold in various real world, world contexts. And certainly this model is oversimplifying what this means. But that said, the results in our model um, will, will give you this inequality provably. So let me just show you the, main, the first main theorem in a picture. So I've plotted a cartoon of what you might see as marginal revenues for the two different groups and marginal costs. And so I've drawn the majority group in red and the minority group in blue. Um, and so since the firm is maximizing profit, it's going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost with its choice of how much data to buy. And that means that the amount of data it will optimally buy for the minority group will be less than for the majority group. And it'll, the particulars will depend on the parameters, but if you write down a sort of normal functional form, you can get an exact sort of quantifiable uh, ratio like this. And in general, you may not want to make such assumptions, but you can write down other qualitative results as well. So, you might ask, well, maybe the problem is that you have a monopolist, because we think in general competition is usually bad uh, for consumers, so maybe we can fix this with competition. Um, so now I'm going to think about having another uh, firm, and both firms are going to make choices how much to invest, and consumers are going to react to them. Um, and we kind of have a spectrum of how forgiving to think about, uh, how forgiving consumers will be to error. So from like the extreme sort of homo economicus that Yochai mentioned yesterday to more you know, forgiving uh, consumers. And this leads to a spectrum of intensity of competition. Um, and so we look at three models situated along the spectrum. One is multilinear, which is a simple generalization of what we were first thinking of. Another is proportional, which is a uh, a split of the zero-sum game that you know, we can talk about the details offline. Um, but in both these models, to emphasize, you don't get any improvement of this provable uh, error inequality. Uh, and proportionally, you actually get worse. Only in the most extreme models of competition, in the homo economicus realm, do you get this uh, error inequality result to go away. But that has a lot of, it's a very strong assumption and probably doesn't reflect the way things are in the real world. So then we ask, OK, if you were a regulator, can you fix this? Can you improve things for the minority group with some kind of regulation? So the way we model it is two kinds of constraints. 
One I'm calling equal error, the other is absolute guarantees. Under equal error, um, what you're saying is that for any two groups, it better not be the case that the ratio of their error is above some threshold. Um, the absolute guarantees is saying, you know, I don't care what the relationship is of the error across the different groups, but none of them better be above some threshold. And they lead to different feasible, uh, feasible regions like you see in the pictures. So the question you have to ask is, does this help and do we have to pay a price? And the answer to both questions is yes. So for the minority, you are definitely going to decrease the error that they face. The, the monopolists will respond by decreasing the error, investing more in the minority group in both cases. Um, and certainly you will impact the profits of the firm negatively because it was optimizing before and you've just added more constraints. Now, what's interesting is that these two different constraints have different implications for the majority group. Under the equal error constraints, you've sort of coupled what were independent problems and the majority group's error will go up. The firm will respond by investing less in the majority group. Under the absolute error guarantees, you actually leave them separate and so you can help both groups out without hurting the other. Um, which of these kinds of constraints is more appropriate will really depend on the real world setting that you're thinking of. Um, and so just some uh, key takeaways. I think that you know, this, this kind of study, like while it's stylized, it highlights some really interesting uh, ideas and maybe some important ones for the real world. So when we ask, you know, are, can, should we build all these fair algorithms or, or will companies use fair algorithms if we build them? Um, the answer may be, well, it depends on incentives. And if you really want to uh, improve fairness, you might have to think about these incentives. In particular, in these models, it may not be enough to just use competition. You may actually have to regulate things. Um, but again, these models are very stylistic. So further and more detailed and, and less stylistic uh, study is, is warranted. Thank you.